just making some notes on uh, like NPCs and stuff that we made in the last session. Um, I'm remembering three of them if you count the corp if you count the corporation, which ironically, I think we should count corporations as uh, characters in a, a dystopian future. And keep this on hand in case I need to reference them. I think it might be smart to sort of like loop back um, people and places uh, that we encountered in previous sessions. It's very, I'm trying to sort of like pull in like the philosophy of Mythic GME without really like doing Mythic GME. Although I came close, I uh, was reading it this afternoon and um, was kind of tempted. Um, but I had to remind myself that um, I'm technically already working with two different um, like oracles or emulators or whatever just by using um, uh, solo work here and then my oracle deck. So um, just got to pump the brakes. But that doesn't mean we can't uh, sort of like lean on Mythic's um, strategy, right? Um, warehouse in and Progen Division had a warehouse in Underjean and I uh, I'm realizing what I forgot to do last session at every um, interval when we checked off progress for doing the job uh, we were supposed to test um, <clears throat> test uh, mission progress against DR10 using our glitch score um, sort of as like a, a modifier and if I'm remembering right um, a burn hacker starts with D2 glitches uh, let's see let's see uh Yeah, glitch is D2, but now is that, is like my score is like a D2 or, um, well, let's get these out of here. These are for when I will eventually play Cyborg with my friends. Uh, let's see. Glitches, page 78. <laughs> You begin with D2 glitches and regain them by rolling that D2. Uh, okay. Okay, so I shouldn't be writing down my glitches. Our D2, I should be rolling D2. Um, uh, okay. Let me burn the first one and roll d2, odds or evens. Uh, that's a, a one on the d4, so that's we have one glitch right now. D2, one glitch. Um, yeah. So basically, every time we regain them by rolling D2, again, after you've spent all glitches and had the chance to rest. Okay. So yeah, so at each arc, so like for the first box that was uh, getting our hands on, uh, I'm just going to pronounce it Cleo, uh, the corporal kid turned gangooner. Um, we should have rolled there to see if there was like a twist or a complication. Um, and then when we dropped them off, which was the second part of the mission. That's okay. That's okay. It made a, it would have like maybe changed some circumstance of what we played in the first session. But I'm not going to sweat it. Set that right there to remind us of you know the story so far. And now I'm going to generate 
the new mission. Okay, even sped up, I'll bet this is a long time to wait. Let's get this out of the way. <clears throat> okay, here's what we rolled for the session two mission. Uh, our contact is a washed up VIP, and that's gotta be Lamo. Again, right? We would be kind of dumb. And he's acting on behalf of himself is going to promise Cord 10,000 uh, credits if he can get aboard a freight ship and sabotage a relic. All he knows about the relic is that it's something hidden, it's something sort of a jelly fungus that's hidden inside a stuffed animal. The freight ship is located in Go, which is going to be a problem. Let's get this because uh, Go is the uh, nuclear fallout area, if I'm not mistaken. Let's go to the index. Go. This is where the rock fell, where the bombs dropped. A post-apocalyptic quagmire kept in quarantine by a massive wall monitored by auto turrets and armed drones. Entering this sector without proper protection is still a death sentence. Uh, okay. Supposedly there's an entrance through a kill club music venue called my wall well that's cool um it's it says one of the doors on the go ball work is said to lead to this club but i think it'd be cool if that club was like a, a way in we're gonna reference this later okay um so somehow, some way, there is a old freight ship located in Go. I guess I have to interpret that as um, there are still active waterways into the city of Sai, which I think is also interesting. And not what I would expect. The freight ship is populated by a Roadrunner clan, which I've generated down here. Um, rolling on, not rolling, but like flipping through the Oracle cards, 
Uh, the Roadrunner gang is called the Holy Beasts, and they have a reputation of being courageous uh, to a bit of a fault. Maybe suicidal is the way to really <laughs> interpret that. Um, and they are prideful. Their specialty is corporate sabotage, smash and grab operations. Um, if this plays out kind of like our first session, I think I have everything I need because uh, instead of populating just like random rooms on a uh, warehouse like I did last time, I thought, why not actually go to the... Um, the map pack that came with the book and we're gonna load up the cargo ship here so again patrolled by the holy beasts uh the features that i rolled um there's anti-nano propaganda all over the ship not sure how that's gonna affect anything um there is hidden conspiracy data in here which is going to talk about the latest headline um the headlines is something I haven't really gotten into. Uh, where are they? I didn't see them in the index, but I'm sure they're up here in the front. So the miserable headlines. Um, the group should decide how often uh, how often they want these events to occur by choosing a die to use. Um, okay. Uh, what do we do? The Game Master rolls a die each midnight. A result of one activates a miserable headline. A D66 determine which miserable event makes the rounds. Okay, so... Um, I should have been rolling for this all along. Um, I'm going to be kind of kind to myself, uh, make it a monthly, so burn the first one. Uh, and this would be the seven. I don't know if you guys could read that, uh, if it shows up on the camera. Um, this, this flip is for last session, and this is for this session, it's a five. So for at least the start of this session uh, no miserable headline uh, where was I with this oh okay yeah yeah so somewhere on the ship is information about the previous miserable headline but we haven't had one so instead I'm gonna say uh, this somewhere on the ship is hidden conspiracy data about the terrible truth that court is aware of about the nanobacteria that's creeping into the net. Um, so we'll see if that comes into play. And there's also an EMP booby trap on here, which I think is kind of fitting with the Holy Beast and their um, corporate destruction specialty. Um, the freighter ship is described as being large and labyrinth-like, so I'm, I'm gonna say that there's actually cargo containers. <laughs> this is my sketch of cargo containers on the ship. Um, and I'm not really sure how I'm going to manage navigating this small map. Um, but that's that's my intention. Uh, so with that, I think we're ready to get started. Um, we can say uh, this session begins opening up at Lamo's home, which is somewhere in the, I'm going to this for a while. Uh, Lamo lives somewhere in uh, the in-betweens, I think it's called. The in-betweens being, um, Kind of where all the corporate wage slaves kind of get shunted to. Yeah. Um, I wanted somewhere close to where our first session was because we didn't spend a lot of time traveling. 
Brunch, Brunch, Burn, Burn Church Hacks. Wow. Uh, is currently surging with pop up food stalls and selling mycobiotic meat grown illegally underwater in Go. Maybe we can lean on that too. Yeah. Lamo lives in uh, Burn Church Hex. I'm going to write that down. BH. Uh, I'm not even going to try to spell that uh, while I'm thinking. Um, and uh, we haven't actually. We, Cord has not actually, uh, I have not. I'm Cord. I'm playing Cord. I don't know, do I, I don't play as a player often, and I'm not, never really got comfortable with, uh, speaking, you know, as my characters, uh, when I did. Um, so I'm probably gonna flip back and forth between how I describe it. But, um, Payment from Lamo for the last session is still outstanding. Uh, and we're feeling the squeeze, um, you know, on our, our mounting debt. I am going to say last night session went so smoothly, I don't really think it warrants leveling up. Um, however, uh, I am going to advance... You know, Lamo said, uh, you know, I'll give you what I can now. Um, and of the 8,000, he paid us uh, one. So we have 1,000 credits to our name. Which is kind of crazy to think about. Um, 1,000 plus 50. And let's see if there's anything... Uh, if we could have procured some gear uh, since uh, dropping um, Cleo off with Lamo, you know, flashback to that scene and, and uh, we, we sort of <laughs> limp off the bus, uh, probably still smoldering a little bit from being inside the burning warehouse. Uh, Cleo completely unconscious, maybe dying, and uh, drag or carry Cleo's body uh, down the alleyway where we said we'd meet with Lamo, and uh, I, I think that's kind of worth exploring. Um, let's see how Lamo feels about dropping Cleo off in that condition by testing this so this is dr10 um using our glitch as a stat um does lamo have a problem with us dropping off uh cleo in uh, such terrible condition um let's see let's burn the first one uh 18 plus uh, our current glitches is 1, so that's 19. And 16 plus 1 is 17. That's a strong hit. No, he doesn't have a problem. Okay, so he, he was going to pay us, um, but he doesn't have the money right now. So he's like, I'll, I'll give you a 1,000 right now and a lead on, because it's a strong hit. So we should have a lead on uh, searching for something. Uh, what is like the shopping oracle here. I don't think it's really called an oracle, but uh, there is, I thought, uh, like we need, yeah, dudes with stuff to sell. Okay, can we find some like back alley salesman? Uh, this will be testing knowledge. Um, I'm going to make it easy now because Lamo gave us a, a strong hit is Lamo giving us a lead to a guy um, so dr10 test knowledge that's plus two for a uh, cord for us so that's eight plus two is ten okay a weak hit um, we find something but we're not in control of what he's selling right now so it's gonna be a random uh, Salesman, essentially, because there's dudes with stuff to sell. It's uh, roll a d8. 
And he is a five. He has illegal equipment. Interesting. Um, but it's not weapons, armor, or mods. So let's take a look at the equipment thing and see if we can spend this uh, 1,050 that we got right now. Um, <clears throat> before moving on to mission number two. Equipment. <laughs> I'm going to pick up some lock picks. for electronic. That sounds very illegal. And uh, skimmer. Uh, that's 300 and 200 respectively. So five, and then I'll take an explosive to handle any door that might not work with electronic lock. That's another 100, so 600, which leaves us with 400 left in our pockets. Um, Oh, I see. Yeah, we bought a ton of illegal stuff here. Good, because illegal stuff's remarkable with the max. Um, you know, I'm also going to take the fake ID. So now we have 1050. We have 150. We're carrying hella illegal stuff. And then we are going to return to our um, our usual haunt, which is a coffin motel, to pay for another night. Uh, I'm going to pay a couple nights in advance. Um, thinking, okay, so when we cord return to our regular coffin motel, We've got 150 credits burning in our a hole in our pockets, and, and we're thinking if we can uh, sort of bamboozle <laughs> the, the the guy working here, um, whose name is uh, Mohammed. Mohammed. Mohammed's the guy that works behind the counter uh, um, at this coffin motel. Uh, uh, the Coffin Motel is called the hallucinar, hallucinar, Hallucinatory Journey. The Coffin Motel. I'm going to write this down too. Probably not important, but you never know. Coffin Motel. It's as close to a home base as we got. Hallucinatory Journey. Owned by Mohammed, or managed, and uh, maybe with by flashing this much money, we can convince Mohammed to let us pay a couple uh, nights in advance. That's not usually how these things operate, but it would be nice to uh, not have to go through this rigmarole every time we show up. You know, it'd be nice to just walk in, feeling a little uh, full of ourselves. Uh, Tonight, Mohammed is feeling. Uh, checking reactions, three, eight, indifferent. It's his usual thing. He's probably watching uh, some sort of like sports feed on his holovid and um, 
we approach it and sort of knock on the uh, plastic window th divider thing. Um, and he, you know, waves us off and says, uh, oh, your usual spot. Oh, Mohammed, uh, not this time. In fact, I wanted to show you, we actually have, um, and uh, we, we sort of like hold up our, our cred stick, uh, flash in the number. Um, can we make an impression on Mohammed with the amount of money that we have? Uh, pres presence check. And uh, I believe this is an instance we want to do the general adventure move here. Um, yeah. Okay. So test presence. Um, normal difficulty, DR12. So uh, our presence modifier is zero. So we have 11, which is a miss. And 10. Oof. Double miss. Fail. Uh, <laughs> and uh, taps, you know, as we're holding the cred stick up against the window, uh, you know, like like this, you know, like up against the window, this is the window, and uh, trying to show off the money. Um, he reaches across and he like wraps his knuckles on the other side of the window and uh, the cred stick counter finishes ticking down to the thousand that we just spent all the way down to 150. And uh, no go. So in order to recover, we are going to spend our seven credits uh, for our usual place. And uh, I'm going to assume if I spend a little extra. Um, I don't know if it wants to get that granular. OK, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> Uh, we'll spend seven, and I'm gonna just prepay for like, uh, you know, can I at least get my bus pass, Mohammed, and and, and purchase a, a monthly um, uh, tram pass, which is twenty five. So seven and twenty five, it's thirty two. One fifty minus thirty two is uh <laughs> 20 18 i think i'm just gonna go with 118 and i'll feel honest so now we're down to 118 but we do get to heal and uh i'm just gonna recover our glitch we're just gonna go up to two glitches because i'm feeling I'm feeling, feeling like I heard it. And so the remainder of the uh, night passes. And uh, we probably sleep into the late morning. Um, it's the, the following day. Weather is unpredictable here in Sai. And we wake up in the afternoon to eat. Go dust winds. Uh, there's warnings on our, uh, you know, when our alarm clock on our uh, RCD goes off, and you know, it's weather warnings. Um, carcinogenic uh, dust particles are are high today, so you're typical. You know, wear a mask is is the takeaway. So uh, we cord uh, down our uh, shitty, you know, expired filter mask before heading back out. To go see the Lamo. Are we able to take public transportation without hardship from uh, wherever we are? In it's got to be like some sort of slummy area. The slums. I'm not sure. I think it's just the slums. Anywhere with these uh, dotted areas. Not really worried about it, but we're, we're traveling from the slums, quote unquote, to uh, uh, burn church hex. So, do we pass without incidents? Let's ask the oracle. Um, 
our, is our is our travel. I see. I have to phrase this. Um, it is possible that our travel is interrupted. So uh, on a six plus of a d12, the answer is yes. And I rolled a seven. We are interrupted. Something happens. <laughs> One thirty. T hundred city events. Oh man, I missed the whole chart. <laughs> uh, Fifty four. What happens? Uh, body bags piled on the street next to a subway exit. Oh, that's right on cue. Okay. Um, are they guarded by anyone? Unlikely. Eight plus nine. Yes, they are guarded. Um, okay. So as we exit the. As we exit the, the subway uh, terminal in Burn Church Hex, uh, the, the daily dead from that um, uh, dust wind has been piled up in body bags and it's guarded by, I'm going to guess, would be a pretty bored um, security officer. Uh, I think it would be goofy not to try to... Uh, lift something off, you know, to do a little bit of pilfering. So with a agility test, we can sneak past the guard and sort of rifle through the contents of the body bags. Uh, I have a fail, a double fail. We're caught. <laughs> All right, what's his reaction? I'm going to take uh, the worst of the... Uh, I'm going to test twice and take the worst. Uh, two and five. Five, six, seven is seven. That is indifferent, or is he five? Angered. Yeah, he's angry. Okay, so we reach for, um, you know, wait for him to sort of turn away. It looks like he's answered a phone call on his RCD, and uh, we, we start sniffing around uh, the body bags, seeing if we can get anything before uh, they're hauled away. And as we're, we're doing that, uh, the security guard abruptly puts a hand on our shoulder. Hey, what are you doing? Um, get your hand out of there. Um, I think we should try to... Um, trick him. <laughs> We're... Um, we... Cord, uh, we turn around and... Oh, oh I'm, I'm actually here to um, assess the, the bodies. Um, I'm going to make this a higher difficulty... <laughs> To do uh, not almost impossible, but difficult. Fourteen to persuade him, um, and that is a fail. Oh boy, double fail. No, I'm not buying it. You're one of those uh, gutter living punks who are here to like a vulture. The corporal guard says and uh, draws his pistol on us. <laughs> Uh, that'd be rolling initiative. Um, let's see here, really quickly. Quick stats for a goon. This went south pretty fast. I don't see why he would be... Oh, guard, right there. Uh, HP, 2d4. He has three, five hit points. Um, he has d2 armor. And his weapon does deep. No, that's got to be a roll on a random table, not a weapon that does d12 damage. <laughs> that would be way too much. Um, let's see. Couldn't help but try to rob the corpses, could we? D12, I rolled an 11. This sounds bad, right? Yeah, an 11. A pulse rifle. <laughs> okay. Uh, pulse rifle does d10 automatic. I feel like we're just gonna die here. <laughs> All right, roll initiative. Um, d6. Uh, we go first, which is good because I am going to. I nah, I'm saying I now cord. I will. We have two small submachine guns. They do d6 attack, and we're gonna pull them out and shoot him with auto fire. It's agility, D6, 
DR12 to hit. Uh, and that is a swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. Uh, which is awesome. And then we go rolling for cover underneath the... Uh, it's his, his turn now. So we, as we roll for cover behind the body bags. That's terrible. Test agility DR12 to avoid. We rolled a 19. So Cord goes rolling behind the piled up body bags as... Uh, the security guard lets uh, um, his pulse rifle just rip through all the bodies. Chunks and viscera going everywhere. Um, pop back out and counterattack with another auto fire. And that is going to be another miss. This is not working out well for us. But again, when we duck for cover behind the bodies, we avoid. It's our turn now. Again, this is our third turn. And we need to do something drastic we need to try to i think we just need to run away because i don't want to get pulse rifled um or maybe we can use a glitch what are glitches good for deal next one is reroll all right let's shoot again dr12 and we will spend a glitch to lower it by four so the dr is eight and we rolled a six. That's still a miss. Because we only have plus one agility. Oh, man. Okay. Um, spend our last glitch to reroll. It's another six? Oh, my God. That's a double miss. Oh, jeez. And we're out of glitches now. All right. Uh, um, roll to avoid this shootout. And we are hit. Oh, no. Okay. Um, his pulse rifle does d10 damage. We have no armor. This is bad. Eight damage. Negative four. Uh, what happens when you are zero HP? D8. Uh, D8, a two, unconscious for D4 rounds, and we awake uh, D4 rounds for one round, and we wake up with all of our hit points back. So I think um, this session went sideways really fast. I'm going to stop here because I love how just horribly wrong everything went for us. If I was complaining in the first session about things being too easy, this was great. We tried to rob a um, pile of irradiated corpses and were blasted away by the guard guarding them before we could even get to Lamo for the mission. And I think there should be a really interesting twist for where what our circumstances are for when we awaken. And for that, I think, uh, let's use the theme matrix. This looks like it's uh, a D66 table. So when we come to, after that fu like terrible firefight, um, our theme matrix is one and four. Uh, so first table for uh, lost hacker or drive. I'm going to take lost. And six. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. And one. Lost infested beggar download. We wake up. With not a clue where we are, we are where the body bags were being taken to. Yeah, the the corporate uh, security guard thought he killed us and just added our body to uh, the body bag pile. And we we're going to awaken in a, um, I think a morgue is too kind of a term. I think these bodies are probably just like sloughed off to 
um, somewhere for like meat processing, right? And uh, I think our next session we're gonna pick up uh, and take it from there. Wow, this went <laughs> this went terrible really fast. Oh, we gotta check. Um, do I have my gear? Do I have anything? Uh, let's see the oracle. Um, uh, where is it? I don't think it's very likely. Roll a d12, use the following table to answer yes, no questions. I think it's unlikely we have anything. Although we did decide to pilfer the bodies because we... I'm going to say it's 50-50. It's 50-50. Um, and let's use the card oracle. Yes. Yes, and. Yes, and. Um, yes, and. Um, there will be things here for us to, like, like the... Um, the bodies and the body bags were not picked over yet. So um, we'll be able to do that. So for session three, oh, this is exciting. <laughs> it's like weirdly exciting. Um, lost my marker, my pen there, session three. Session three, where are we? Bodies all around. <laughs> Loot. Cord has his gear. And we'll see what happens next time. Good night, everybody. <laughs>